this video we will learn how to solve homogeneous systems of differential equations in with repeating eigenvalues. So let's get started. So consider the system du dt equals to 3, 0, 3, 0, u1, u2. Okay, by now we know how to solve this. So first step is to find the eigenvalues of the matrix. So let's compute the characteristic polynomial. In this case, this will be 3 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda 0 equals to 3 minus lambda squared equal to 0. And so we see that we only have one eigenvalue, which is 3. Okay, second, we want to find the eigenvectors associated with lambda equals to 3. So we have to solve this matrix problem a minus 3i times x equal to 0. So the augmenting matrix for this system now reads 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that, that means that both components of the vector x are free variables. And we can choose them as we please. And so in fact, that means we get two eigenvectors here. So we can choose first the eigenvector 1 0 and secondly we can choose a vector 0 1 and you can check that both of these solve the system up there good so that means we can write down our solution for this equation and it's going to be u of t equals to c1 e3t 1 0 plus c2 e3t 0 1 And that's really it. So note that this essentially works because in this case, if we rewrite these equations, we see that these equations are essentially independent. They don't talk to each other because the first differential equation here looks like du1 dt equals to 3 u1, where the sec whereas the second equation looks like du2 dt equals to 3 u2. So in the first equation, only u1s appear, so they're no information from u2 enters and in the second equation only u2s appear so no information from u1 enters so in other words these two equations are independent and so we could have solved them separately if we would have liked okay now let's consider a more interesting case so consider the equation Okay, let's consider something slightly more interesting. So let's have a look at this particular matrix equation. As before, we proceed by computing the eigenvalues from the characteristic equation, which in this case will be negative lambda 2 minus lambda 1. So the characteristic polynomial will be lambda, lambda minus 2, plus 1. So now we can expand this, so I get lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 1 equal to 0. And now I can solve this using the quadratic formula and I find that we have a single solution, lambda equal to 1. Okay, so now let's continue and try finding our eigenvectors. So the eigenvectors in this case have to solve the problem, have to solve this matrix problem. So we can write down as before an augmented matrix here. So I get minus one, minus one, 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 zero, zero. Row reduction, the rows are multiples of each other. So this is very simple. And so I, I need that minus x1 plus x2 equal to 0 and as before x2 is my free variable here so I will choose it as I please and so here I find that x1 has to equal to x2 so my eigenvector here if I choose x2 equal to 1 has to be the vector 1 1. So the problem here is now that this is the only eigenvector that we can find and so we're missing an eigenvector. And so 
essentially we can write down one solution. So I can write down our first solution, which is u1 of t. And in this case, this will equal some constant e to the power of t multiplied by this eigenvector. But we know that we have a system of two equations, so we need two solutions. And so now the question is, how do we find the second solution? So once again, let's try a particular ansatz here. And so our ansatz here is motivated what we observed for second order equation that had degenerate um, solutions to the characteristic equation. So there, remember that we considered the second solution to be of the form of t e to the t. So let's try something similar here. So suppose that we have a second solution u2 of t and it looks something like this. So we have some second vector x2, then we add our first vector, multiply by t, and this whole thing has to be multiplied by the exponential e to the t. So now let's take the solution and let's plug it into the differential equation. So in this case, the differential equation is this. So I have to compute the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Okay, let's compute the left-hand side. So I'm gonna compute du2 of dt. So this is gonna be d dt of x2 plus x t e to the t. Remember that these vectors x2 and x are t independent, so the differential does not apply to them. So we can rewrite this as x2 e to the t plus x d dt of t e to the t. Okay, let's rewrite this one more time. I have this plus x. And here I'm going to get an e to the t term coming out plus a t e to the t term. Okay, now let's do the right hand side. So this will be a u of 2. Okay, so I get plugging in a u2. I'm going to get a of x2 plus xt, all multiplied by e to the t. So I'm going to get a x2 multiplied by e to the t plus ax multiplied by e t and multiplied by t. Okay, next we, we equate the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So in other words, we're gonna equate the things I wrote down in pink and the things I wrote down in green. Okay, so this gives us that x2 plus x e to the t, so I'm grouping terms that have the same function of t, plus x t e to the t has to equal to, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I have a x2 e to the t here, and then I have a x t e to the t. Okay, now what we'll do, we equate matching terms. So we have an e to the t term on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and the coefficients of these have to equal. So I get that x2 plus x has to equal to a x2. And I also get that a x has to equal to x here. Good, so let's rewrite these equations a little bit. So we get one equation that looks like a minus i x2 equals to x and a second equation that looks like a minus i x equal to zero. So in other words, x2 is a second solution if both of these equations are satisfied. But note that the first equation must be satisfied already since x is an eigenvector of a corresponding to eigenvalue one. So this equation is good. Okay, so we have to solve this equation here now for x2, and we can do this once again using row reduction. So let's write down this matrix. So this matrix becomes negative one, one, negative one, one, and then the right-hand side, the augmented part is one, one. 
we can see that these two rows are multiples of each other, so row reduction is very easy. We simply end up with a row of negative one, 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 and a row of all zeros. Okay, let's introduce this notation for the components of the x2 vector. So I'm gonna call the first component x2, one, and the second component x2, two. And then rewriting this first row here, we find that minus x21 plus x22 has to equal to 1. Or rearranging this for x21, we can find that x21 has to equal to x22 minus 1. And remember that this x22 here, once again, is a free variable. So I can choose a value that I would like. So let's write down our solution, so x2. So a particular nice choice of x to 2 would be 1, because then x to 1 becomes 0. Okay, so now we found that we have our second solution. Looks like 0, 1 plus t, 1, 1, all multiplied by e to the t. Or we can rewrite this to become t, e, t, and here in the second component we get e to the t plus t, e, t. Okay, let's put it all together now. So our general solution will be u of t will be a sum of u1 and u2 with some constants. So c1, u1 of t plus c2, u2 of t. And then let's substitute in what u1 and u2 are. So we're going to get that we have here c1 e to the t 1 1 plus c2 this vector up here so t e t and e t plus t e t and we can go one step further and rewrite this as c1 e t c1 e t plus c2 t e t plus c2 1 plus t e to the t and that's it and once again so to find c1 and c2 we would use the initial conditions 